Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to master a song in 10 minutes. Take over, take over. Okay, so what actually is mastering? Well, mastering is the very final stage of creating a track, and it's after you've done your mix. And what it is, is taking that stereo audio file up to the kind of quality and volume that you would expect to hear on a professionally released track on the radio or in a nightclub. Now, before all of the mastering engineers absolutely burn me on the comments below, I've got a few things to say first. If you can send your track to a proper mastering engineer, it is better for a couple of reasons. One, they're going to have more experience, probably better equipment, and another set of ears listening objectively to your track is always a good thing, as you may have missed things because you get too close to the project. However, that being said, I think it's really important for home recording artists and EDM producers to be able to do at least rudimentary mastering on their tracks. You want to get it out to the DJs or you want to test it in the clubs, so it has to stand up against the other tracks out there. Now I showed you a few weeks ago how I mixed my track Take Control that I wrote with Ron Carroll and the brilliant singer Jay Lynn, and since then a lot of you have been asking how I mastered it. So I will show you not exactly what I used because I'm going to only be using the stock plugins and one extra plugin, but it's free, that came in my door. Now I'm going to be using Ableton Live, but it doesn't matter if you're using FL Studio or Logic Pro or another door because they will each have comparable plugins that you can use. So let's get right to it. First disclaimer. It's important to have a really good mix down before you start the mastering process. You know what they say, you can't polish a turd, but you can roll it in glitter. I mean, if you have a bad mix down, it's going to make mastering it and coming up with a good product so much harder. If you want to know how to mix great dance music, then check out some of my other videos and you can find out there. Okay, so step one is to determine what the purpose of your track is. I mean. Is it to be played on the radio? Is it a club track? So for my track, Take Control with Ron and Lynn, I knew I wanted it to be able to be played on the radio, but also in the club. And actually I will master it slightly differently for the radio mix and the club mix. So here is the radio mix that we're gonna be looking at today, because having your tunes played on the radio is awesome, let's be honest. That's like the holy grail. I've imported a reference track and that is basically a track that I know sounds good in the same genre or a similar genre. And I know it sounds good on the radio. I know it sounds good in my car. I know it sounds good on my laptop, whatever. Um, it's a good yardstick to work towards. It doesn't mean we want our track to sound exactly the same, but in terms of tonality and the frequencies it's hitting and the end volume, it's a good place to start. So I've imported a track called Don't Give Up On Love uh, by Blinky. It was out last year uh, because the track that I wrote with Ron and Lynn is a piano track with a female vocalist. It's house music. So let's listen to my track first. Okay, and that's with no mastering on. And this is the reference track. So we can hear the reference track is a lot louder and a lot punchier. So the first thing we need to do is bring the volume of the reference track down because it's already been mastered. So what we need to do is get them to the same volume in terms of how they sound. And we can do this by ear or we can use a VU meter. And this is the extra download that I talked about. This is the plugin that doesn't come with doors as stock. But this one is free, it's called MV Meter and it is by TB Pro Audio and it's free and I've stuck the link in below but you need this for this mastering session, so grab it. Okay, so I've put a utility uh, from Ableton on the reference track and basically I've opened up this meter and set it to VU. At the moment you can see it's 
way over, but we want to bring this gain knob down until it's bouncing around zero. Great, that looks good to me. Actually, it's a bit high still. Oh, I forgot to say, you want to loop the busiest parts of your track, usually after the second or the third drop, or if you're not mixing dance music, you know, the chorus, second or third chorus, where there's the most going on, and make sure that the reference track is lined up so that their second or third chorus or drop is lined up with yours, and then just loop that area and it makes it working much quicker. Okay. Now we've got that bouncing around zero, we need to make sure that we've done the same for our track so they sound the same level. And a VU meter is not the same as a peak meter because a peak will just show the very highest peaks, whereas a VU meter is taken over a longer period of time in milliseconds, so it gives an average volume. So we'll jump over onto our track, which is Take Control. We'll open up our meter and I've put everything in a mastering group and that's just so I can turn it on and off quickly. But I've already loaded up the different plugins that all come with Ableton Live and as I said, the equivalents will be in your door. So you don't need to worry about spending loads of money on expensive plugins. Now I can't deny that if you do spend money on some premium plugins, like the Sonox Oxford ones are brilliant and you will get a better sound but you don't need to do it. You can get a great sound from these if you know what you're doing. So I've slung another VU meter instance over our track. So we've got one on the reference track and we've got one on our track. And we can see that again, it's overloading, not by as much as the other was, but still overloading. So we'll put a, ut a utility plug in and just tweak the gain until our track is bouncing around the zero as well. And now when we compare our tracks, they should sound about the same in volume. Great, now we don't need to worry about the volume kidding us into whether our track sounds right or not. There are four or five basic stages to mastering a track. The first is the gain staging, which is adjusting the volume so it's right. The next is EQ. Then you've got compression, which glues the track together. Then the optional stage is a bit of saturation, which adds harmonics and a bit of body to the track. Now you don't need this necessarily. If you've got a really great mix down, you won't need this. And then the last stage is volume control, and that's where we use a limiter. Now let's go through each of these in order. So we've done our gain staging. Next is EQ, and I'll show you what I've done here. Let's listen to it without EQ. and against the reference track. Now we can hear there's a lot more high end in the reference track. So I've added some high end here, about 2.45 kilohertz, and that's actually a very big boost for mastering. Usually you want to use smaller boosts and cuts to make sure it all sounds natural, but I felt that it needed quite a lot of high end added. And what I've done here is rolled off the bass under about 39 hertz. Usually I do that around, yeah, between 30 and 40 hertz, rolled it off quite steeply. And that is because these sub bass frequencies take up a lot of headroom in the mix. And that means that the last stage, which is volume, uh, will be a lot quieter. And usually this is just wasted headroom anyway. And in fact, in a nightclub where you've got really powerful subwoofers, having too much low end can really make the whole track sound muddy. Now we'll listen to the reference track again. Over, 
Now, I thought that my track was a little bit muddy in the low mid ranges, so I've just tweaked out a couple of notches here at 200 hertz and at 440 hertz. Now, you can see that the gain reduction I've put on them is very subtle indeed, and that's for the reason I said earlier, we want it to remain quite subtle so it doesn't sound unnatural. Great, next stage, happy with that, compression. Now let's listen to the reference track. Now it's very heavily compressed, so what we can do is we can add a glue compressor, or the equivalent, and take the threshold down. Let's take the makeup off there and put it to 100% wet. So this is the default setting, not compressing it at all. So let's listen to our track. And the makeup here is just to just increase the volume to the degree that we've compressed it. So we can see it's being compressed by about 5 dB. So we just make do the makeup to more or less 5 dB. And that's so we don't get confused by the difference in volume. Because if you listen to this, now I've put the makeup gain up. The volumes are the same. You can just hear it stuck together a lot more. But we can use this dry wet knob and this is a great feature because it means we can use parallel compression because if this is completely crushing the life and dynamics out of our track we can just mix in some of the dry signal to the wet signal. So here we've got 75% wet and only 25% of the dry signal instead of 100% compressed signal. Again, they're very subtle changes. And if we always make sure that our track is bumping up around zero dB, then we know it's gonna sound a similar volume to the reference track when we switch. Great. Now we can add a little saturation and you have to be careful with this. Um, because it can very quickly ruin your track or ruin your mix. So be gentle. And this just adds more harmonics to the sounds already there and can really fill out your track. That's off. And that's on. But this is very subtle and to be honest, mastering does take practice. You know, you've got to listen very carefully to the tracks, to your reference track, and to the difference when you're turning things on and off. You will get better with time, trust me. Okay, well, I'm happy with how that sounds. So now all we have to do is increase the volume back up to release level. And we can see on our reference track that we gain reduced by 12.8 decibels, so that the VU meter was peaking at zero. So all we can do now is deactivate that, deactivate that, 12.8, hmm. So we can put a limiter on the end of our chain and put the ceiling to just below naught decibels. And this is because when you are having your track encoded to MP3, sometimes you can get slight digital artifacts which might make the track clip above zero dB and we don't want that. So by just dropping it a fraction of a decibel, we've got a little wiggle room for ourselves. And all we have to do with the limiter is bring it up to the level that we had reduced the reference track. So about 12.8 dB. And you can see that it's attenuating the volume slightly, which means it's compressing it slightly with the limiter. Now be careful that you don't overdo it because it will kill the sound and or distort it and there are much better limiters available than these stock plugins i have to admit again the sonox oxford ones are great i know that ozone make a great limiter as well but for stock plugins and one free plugin listen to the difference this is the track that was the released professional track that went way up in the charts in the uk and this is our master track
If you liked this video and found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Is it all that you got for me? Boy, you know I want more. Can you put me on your elevator? Take me to the top floor. But you gotta hold me down till I beg for more. I can't do it by myself. I need for you to take control. Oh, 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 oh. I need, I need for you to take control. Take control. I need for you to take control. Oh, 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 oh. I need for you to take control. I can't do it by myself. Take over, take over